Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with American Salon Magazine at the IBS New York show. I've got Mickey, right? Mickey, yes. right? Mickey, right. I <laughs> uh, got it right. So Mickey Wright is with me. Um, thank you to American Salon for inviting you down to this table. Um, you have been doing some fun stuff at the show, right? Yes, yes. So we're going to go over what your class was about, and then I want to get into you know what what you're doing, how it happened, all that stuff. Okay. okay. So let's start off. Tell me about your class. Well, I did two classes. The one I've okay. just come from was called Using the um, Internet. Um, using the Internet. Well, Partly using the right. internet, using web, right? Your own web uh, videos and social media to okay. increase your income. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. So, so kind of coaching salon owners, and and teaching them like or stylists, yes, to use their social in a good way, to kind of advance their career, to get clients or. Is that is that kind of your angle? Definitely to get clients. Okay. One of the things that I've seen is that there's kind of two categories yeah. of, of hairstylists right now. And it's like I include the salon owners and the students and all of that into that. And everybody else is a beauty professional. Okay. But there's one side that is knows that they should be on social media right. a little bit more, but they're not. <laughs> right. So they really want to get some information. How do I do this? Yeah. You know, how can I do this with a full clientele? It's actually and amazing still... the amount of people in this industry that yes. are not involved in it social is. media. It is. Like it they're really involved is. in like looking at their friends. Right. But they're not exactly. involved in their business and growing themselves. Right. Right. And then that's the, the second part. Okay. They're online all the time. They're right. having a great time. You know, <laughs> right. typically this is your younger stylist, you yeah. know, they're, they're engaged. But they're not seeing people sitting in their chair because of their engagement right. online. Okay, so t let's talk about that. Let's say sure. um, you've got a stylist that is super into social media. They're mm -hmm. constantly doing it, but they're not seeing a return. What What is your thought process on that? Well, I think it all starts like starts out that this is all marketing. I talk about it being under the big umbrella of right. marketing. So it's like we have this new tool that's social media, that's online, where we can reach more people right. quicker, faster, and less expensive. And so it really is starting out like with a marketing plan, yep. some type of plan of what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. So when you just get on and start playing around and posting a few pictures here and there, you know, people see them, they like it, and we yeah. gather a little bit of a following, but they don't actually trans it doesn't actually translate to them actually coming into the salon and sitting down and getting a service. Right. Right. And so it's really kind of getting that clarity in terms of what you want to do so that you can set up a little bit of a plan right. for yeah. what you want to actually talk about and actually promote and post on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people don't come up with a plan and they mm -hmm. also don't realize that there's actually social media is work. It's a job right. involved. Right. Like it's not just let me post, let me put something out there right. and then hope that it does my job for me right, right? right like you have to actually go and search out clients like right. you need to find people and and get yourself known so right. tell me like now you have the the stylist or the salon owner out there that isn't so involved with social right have never done anything with right. their business what would be right. the first thing you would recommend getting educated okay like and taking a little bit of time and finding out you know it's like I have a training that I offer that actually shows you like what is Facebook and who's its target and what is it doing right now and right so that you can make informed decisions about where you want to be okay because there's so many places to be online that is totally confusing totally overwhelming so right it's like I think you know pick maybe three places that you want to be which needs to be where your clients hang out right and what would be like so if you for mm -hmm. yourself right um, could pick one social media to be on one platform one. even though you need to be on multiple one what, what would you pick i would right now there's two okay <laughs> my number one would be youtube okay because video is just everything yes and you get such a wide audience and a lot of life out of the images and things that you're able to create on video yeah and of course YouTube is connected with Google, and so that helps right. you in your search helps engines Google and all rating, of that. Yeah. Exactly. And the number two that I would do right now is Instagram because it's it's surpassed everything else. Yeah. So it's like we, what we do is visual. You know, the pictures of your, you know, the hairstyles that you're doing. We talked about befores and yeah. afters, and how we forget to take the before or forget to take the after. But it's like how much power there is, right. in, You know, people seeing these images. That's so cool. Okay, so. And then, so my thought process, because I'm, I am on YouTube, obviously, right? right. <laughs> and uh, so I do a lot of YouTube. But for my salon business, what do you, th how, what's your thought process on Facebook video now? So like, Facebook video is huge. Uh -huh. It's growing quickly. Right. 
uh, Facebook's pushing it right faster. So what's your thought process on on that? Facebook, I think, is one of those places that most people need to be. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like if you're going to incorporate doing video, you know, you can use YouTube, obviously, because they've got such a, right. a wide, broad span. But if you're going to be on Facebook anyway, you might as well do some video that's specifically for Facebook. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about Facebook is you can target it, right? Right, so right. YouTube is like... Yeah, it's very general. Yeah. Right, right. So, uh, okay. So, and then in your classroom this weekend at IBS, right. what was like... One of the best questions you got in your class, like wow, some, that something that was like wow, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't expect that question. One thing um, we had a stylist who asked about like what are hashtags, yeah, and how do you use them and what's the purpose, and so it was like kind of really breaking down. It's like you know that they're like an, a place where you can can be. Okay, you know, it's like you can start your own hashtag and have everyone that that promotes you know your salon use your hashtag so that you start right. to grow your following but it's also a great way to gain exposure to a lot a wider audience that you may not have been able to to tap into just because you're using hashtags so you know for Very short cool. hair for red hair for long hair for right. products you know uh, you know work with a product company and you know use their product so it's like when I put their information in my post you know, as a hashtag, it's like everybody that likes that color line is seeing the color line. Right. And so if someone's traveling to my area, they're going to say, you know, it's like, oh, well, this person I know uses Reckon. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of or clients and stuff. Matrix or whatever it may always be. Always asking. Exactly. They're right. Asking, so all of the companies have hashtags. And, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. cool. Okay. So um, and then tell me, so you, how'd you get started in this kind of part of the, the industry? It's been an evolution for me. Okay. You know, I've been in the industry for, for a very long time. How did time, it begin? Um, with social media and internet and Just all of like that. Just like your career in the hair. My in career hair. in the hair industry is a little interesting. It's like I'm second generation. Okay. So my mom is a hairstylist. She still currently does a little bit here and there. Awesome. And I have a sister that's in the industry. And I always liked beauty and fashion, but I never thought about it as a career. Okay. And so I honestly kind of fell into it. Okay. It's like I've shared this a little bit um, but I worked a regular job while I was going to school and uh, one of my co-workers liked the way that I kept my hair so she's like you think you could do my daughter's hair and I was like oh, I probably could do their hair yeah and uh, she had a husband that like never liked anything so you know when I finished she was like oh my god that's a precision cut and you should just quit your job and hang out your shingle and I was like and you're like, like really okay <laughs> no I wasn't so sure so okay, okay. yet but I did contact my mom and right and she's like oh well you know it's like getting a license you know there's nothing bad that can come of getting a license you can explore right. it see if you like it and and I say I kind of fell into it and then I fell in love with it and that's so, awesome yeah and then, <laughs> so how long have you been in the hair industry now uh, more than 25 years that's awesome yeah and then so when did the social media that that kind of like passion there for that happening. Well, like I said, it's all part of marketing and it's yeah. like I've always been someone who's really interested in marketing and branding myself as well as my salons and I was one of the first African American sal salon and full service day spa owners in the country and okay. and so just, you know, kind of setting that difference using uh, PR, you know, press releases and that type of thing was always something, you know, getting published in, you know, American Salon right. and, you know, all the different magazines and publications and that type of thing were always things that I was interested in. And okay. I've been an educator for almost as long as I've been a stylist. Right. And, um, and so it's just kind of the next evolution of how do you market yourself? How do right. you set that difference between yourself and any other person that's out there in terms of what you do or your salon? Well, that's what it's all about. I mean, you right. you saw the shift in the industry. Right. You jumped on it. Yeah. You created success with it, and now you're sharing it. So that's awesome. Right. Um, is there anything else? What is happening next? Where are you headed next? <laughs> What's going on? Well, I have a passion for sharing information. So okay. it's like I love teaching so and that type of thing. find the next place. To yeah, do that. yeah. Are you going to be at uh, any of the other hair shows coming up so people could see you? Um, right now, it's like I don't have anything that's set in stone. It's like I may be doing a few other things, you okay. know, potentially with IBS. And uh, I've okay. been working with them really since the 90s teaching. And so it's really just interesting to see the whole evolution of, you know, where the industry has gone. And that's great. You know, fashions, the uh, product manufacturers, and then, of course, like the whole social media thing. So. Right. And I, we really had a great time with this class this weekend. So it's like I'd love to, you know, spend more time sharing more information to more stylists because, right. I mean, it's really the key to success. If you're not online, no one can find you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think the budget for marketing within salons is small. Like no one has a right. budget right. at this point. So 
learning social media yeah. from classes like yours. And that, I mean, that's a really key point. If I can just throw this in, it's like one of the things that I really stressed with the class is that you really need to get help. Yeah. You know, if we're a busy stylist and we don't know this or understand it that well, you know, and I've talked to people who know that they're, they need to generate, you know, two or $300 an hour to keep their salon profitable and, you know, paying the overhead and all of that. And then they're going home and spending four or five hours trying to figure out how to set up their own website. Right. Not the best use of your time. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> do what you do well. Yeah, so And true. I show you some low-cost ways to, to hire some help and get some support for that. They can, you know, someone who knows what they're doing can go on in a couple minutes and have it all set up for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah, a lot of people know how to do it quick and right. get it done. Right, right. Very right. cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, how can people follow you, find you, all <laughs> that on social media? Well, most of my sites are Mickey Wright, which is M-I-K-I. Everyone wants to give me extra K's and C's and all <laughs> kinds of stuff, but just M-I-K-I-W-R-I-G-H-T. Okay. On Facebook is the only one that's different. It's Salon Biz Coach or Salon Biz Coach 1. Okay. Very yeah. cool. All so right. I'm Re- on Instagram, Twitter, all Facebook. YouTube, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, and what's your YouTube? I have Mickey to find Wright. you on YouTube. Mickey, Mickey Wright, Wright on YouTube? On YouTube, And what yeah. kind of content are you posting on YouTube right now? Um, it's really toward um, building better businesses. Okay. You know, I started so out in the business industry. business focused. It is. Okay. Yep. How do you get the clients in the chair? How do you keep them in the chair? How do you keep them coming back? How do you keep awesome. them spending more? How do you get your name out there so that you can charge whatever you want and not I've worry about the competition? I've talked to you guys a million times. I'm very, <laughs> very upset that... And I've said this a thousand times that a haircut will quickly get 10,000, 100,000, okay, right. 1 million views. Right. And a business video sits there at 50 views right. forever. <laughs> you got to change that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get better at social and you want to know how you can get a million views on your haircut, right. you can get clients in your salon. Right. Then you need to listen to business people <laughs> tell you how to do it. Right. Right. That's done. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Your commercial's over. Yeah, okay. the commercial's over. <laughs> All right, so thank you to American Slime Magazine for hooking us up with this spot at the show. Yeah, such a cool show. What was your favorite part of the show this weekend? Well, I loved seeing the crowds. I love seeing it's the crowd. Crowd here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, a, like I said, I've been around a long time, and I've seen some really ups, and I've yeah. seen a few little dips and that type of thing. And I'm really seeing, you know, people coming in. They're hungry for education. They're, you know, on the floor supporting the vendors. And so I'm, I'm definitely appreciative of being able to be a part of yeah. IBS in this, you know, way. And you know, American Salon. It's just awesome. Yeah, this is like a big show to be a part of. Definitely. I'm, I'm hearing that there is historic numbers in this show. Awesome. It's yeah. the word on the street. Yeah. So, <laughs> Definitely, if you're not involved with IBS, if you haven't been to IBS New York yes. before, check it out next year um, and check it out in Vegas yes. as well, mm-hmm. right? In June. And um, get American Slime Magazine. And read it. That's it. <laughs> and read it. And read it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And again, follow Mickey on everything. Mickey Wright. <laughs> thank you so much, Matt. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next video.